Hey guys, it's going to Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to continue the videos on the XR Interaction Toolkit provided by Unity. I showed you in the previous video how we could use plane detection to place objects either vertically or horizontally. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to some of the AR interactions that are available, such as selection of objects, rotating objects, translating objects, and also a scaling of objects. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you the demo that I have that I created for selection, rotation, scaling, and also translation. So this is a video that I took while I was recording in my in my office and just, you know, walking around and planes are getting generated for the horizontal areas and also vertical areas. So as you can see, I'm placing objects. I'm doing object selection. So the way that it works, and this is what we're going to be building, is as I'm selecting an object, I'm going to have a bigger cube outside that is going to have a rotation and that will denote that the rotation or the object is activated. I can also rotate him, I can move him around, I can also scale him as you can see in this in this case I'm scaling that one, I'm moving it around and it's really precise as far as like moving it around the implementation that XR interaction toolkit has is really really good and really powerful and as you can see I didn't have to do you know, I actually don't have to do any code. So that's what I want to show you in this video. So what we're going to start with, we're going to continue what I did on the previous video. I show you how to create these things. I'm going to be checking this into GitHub at some point so that you guys can download it. Let me just get this out of the way so that we don't have to mess with Xcode. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of the components that we need to modify in order to do what I show you in the video. So the first thing is we're going to go into prefabs and I'm going to look at the component that I created, which is called AR cube. And this is a simple cube with the AR selection interactable that is part of the XR toolkit. So this one is not going to change a lot, except we're going to just add a new custom selection visualization. And to do that, I'm going to go into the prefab, the AR cube prefab. I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to add a new empty game object inside of it. So this one we're going to call it AR selection. And inside of the AR selection, I'm going to create another cube. And this is going to be the cube that is rotating that you saw in the video. So I'm just going to call it rotator. And I'm also going to create a new material. This one is going to be the selection material. So it's going to call it selection. I'm also going to be assigning that. And right now you can't really see it, and, and that's because it's inside of the cube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one about 1.5 on X, Y, and Z. So let's go ahead and do that. I also want to change the try the type of rendering mode in this case. I'm going to change the material to be transparent because we're going to see through that material. That way we can see what we saw in the video. So I think something like that works fine. And then we're going to go back to it and then add a script that is going to add a rotation. So for now, I think this is fine. Let's go ahead and go back. And now what I'm going to have you do is we're going to go into the, actually, we need to go back to that object because we need to add a couple more components. So as you can see, I have this air cube and the air cube has a air selection interactable. So we need to go down here and this is going to be the option that is going to allow the system to toggle between a selection and not a selection. What I mean by that is that this object right here, it's going to be disabled by default. And what's going to happen is the system is going to enable it automatically upon selection. So I'm going to drag it and drop it under the selection visualization. And, and that's going to do the magic of, you know, when you have a selected, it's going to activate it. When you don't have a selected, it's going to deactivate it. So just make sure that you have that disabled. I honestly don't know what would happen if that will be enabled by default. It might work, but I would recommend that you just disable it and then just associate that property to the selection visualization. So that's everything that we need to do on that component. The, the other thing that I'm going to have you do is if we want to do a translation, meaning that we want to move this subject, I'm going to search for AR translation interactable. And this one has a couple of comment uh, properties as well. It's going to give you this option. I don't know what it gives you that option, but what I do is I just remove what it has. So the interaction manager is going to be the one that is in the scene. So that will be automatically selected. So I don't, I just say, I just remove by selecting here and clicking and selecting delete. Then this also allows you to specify if you had any colliders, if you have an interaction layer that you only wanted to allow upon, you know, upon selection and, and translation. 
right now I just set it to everything. There's also different events that this can cover and I'm not going to go through those right now. We can experiment with them later. For now, all we want to do is just a translation. So that's really all you need to do. You can also specify if you want to, you know, you want to set the maximum of the translation distance. This one is set to 10 by default. And this is something that I was playing with. If, if you only want to allow horizontal translation, you can. Or if you want to select vertical translation only. So you see my case, if, you, if you're doing, you know, if you're placing an object on the wall and you don't have the vertical translation set, you're not going to be able to move it up and down. So make sure that you set it to any if you want to allow both. Or, or if you have a use case where you only want to allow one, then you can set it to either vertical or horizontal. So that's everything that we need to do on the translation. So now what if we wanted to do a scale? You can search for scale and the AR scale interactable is in there. I'm also going to delete that. And notice the size of the object that I have right now. It's 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So you want to look at the options in here to make sure that you know, you're, setting, you're setting the maximum scale and the minimum scale. So in my case, in the video, what I did is I set this one to point to basically, well, what you need to do here is I'm going to set the minimum, which is going to be 0 0.01, and then the maximum is going to be 0.1. That's going to allow me to see the, the object, the size that it is right now, and if I want to scale it down, I can scale it down. If I want to scale it up, or you can also go up, you know, if you wanted to have these, maybe go 0.15, or if you want to make an, a giant game object and scale it all the way up, then you can do that as well. So, and then you have options for like the elastic ratio limit, the sensitivity, and also elasticity. I haven't played with those yet, but those are options that you have in that component. So the last thing that I want to do is, what if you want to do a rotation as well? So you can do a rotation. So I'm going to select the AR rotation interactable. And in that object, you also have the interaction, man interaction manager. I'm going to remove it again. It's going to get hooked up automatically. And then same options like you saw on the other interactables. If we go down here, you also have, you know, the kind of like the speed of how, how fast this is going to go when you drag it. You also have one other option, which is going to be the, the rotation rate at the, when you do a twist. So you, you can play with those two options. I, I just left them default for the, for the purposes of the demo that I gave you. So that's everything that we need to do if we want to do selection, translation, scaling of objects, and also rotation of objects. And we're going to be toggling these ba based on, you know, when something is selected, it's going to enable this object. When something is deselected, it's going to disable that object. So the last thing that I want to do, I'm going to, I'm going to enable this. I believe I have a script in here that's called rotator. And that script is really simple. I don't need to walk you through. All it has is a speed of a, of a vector three. And also it just applies a transform rotate. I grab the speed, I multiply by the delta time. This is very common. And, and what I do is I, I basically assign that to the rotator. So when, when the activation of the selection happens, I'm rotating and it just shows you that something is happening. I'm also going to move that script to a different folder. Let's just go ahead and just call it because I'm going to be checking it in. So I want things to be clean. So what I'm going to do is this is going to be the object that we're rotating, right? So I want to add some rotation. So what I want to do is I'm going to select that object. And then in here, I'm going to look for rotator. I'm going to select it. And the speed of the rotation, I want it to be about, I think 50, 50 is a good number. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this and then make sure that I can test my, so this is something I would recommend you do. Just make sure that you test your game object before you add it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And it's not going to show anything because this is all running in AR. But what I want to do is I'm going to enable this. And this is going to be the rate at the speed that we are going to be doing a rotation. Of course, if you want to do a different type of rotation, you can change this value as well. If you want to do, you know, 100, you can do 100. Or if you want to just exaggerate it, you can exaggerate it as well. Or if you want to use X and C, you can do that as well. I think 50 for us works fine. And honestly, that's everything that I wanted to show you today that will cover the basically most of the common trans translations and rotations and scaling that you'll need to do in AR. If you guys have any other questions about anything that you show you, please let me know in the comments. Thank you guys. All right, guys, thank you much for watching this video on XR Interaction Toolkit provided by Unity. If you guys have additional questions on anything that I just mentioned, please let me know in the comments. Also make sure to check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.